Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. It is the week of the healing experience for the month of June, and this month's topic is failure. Now, if you are not familiar with my podcast, once a week for the entire month of, I mean, excuse me, for the entire year of 2018, I am focusing on healing. God had given me 12 different topics to speak on in December of 2017, and I have committed to taking one week a month to focus on those topics. So if you are just joining me and you've never heard of the healing experience whatsoever, I'm going to give you a little background. Essentially, I picked topics that I felt many people were getting stuck you know, where, where I felt many people were getting stuck in their lives and they did not understand why. Like they could be super successful in one area, but other things were failing. And again, the premise was really inspired by things that I was going through personally as well. And I think one of the best things you can do when you are actually experiencing things and changing for yourself is to share that information, especially when you have gone through the healing process and still go through the healing process. So we started off in January with process. That was the topic. We talked about it for a week and it was inspired by a book from the author Adrian E. Moore, um, from process to purpose, your purpose has a sound. And the premise of the introduction was based on that. And then I actually focus on different topics concerning how you process things. And we talk about how maybe when you were younger, you know, you tried to process things in the way that you thought they, they should be done. And then someone may have told you that it wasn't okay to cry or it wasn't okay to be silent or whatever the case may be, but you were trying to process it in a way that was natural and healthy for you. And someone may have come along and told you that that way wasn't right or it did not fit what they thought you should be doing. So I talk about process from that vantage point. And then we go over to February and we talk about heartbreak. Um, heartbreak had a lot more to do with the fact that Your heart was set on something and it was broken because whatever it was set on did not come to pass. We talk later in the year about death and and about your heart being broken from someone leaving this world and from relationships ending. So with that, it brought us over to March, which was childhood. And that, of course, for obvious reasons, was very deep because it really got to the core of who we have become as adults. And if we are having trying times because of things in our childhood, and I think you get to a point, you know, people say, oh, that's your inner child, or people make little jokes about things in childhood, and they don't really realize that sometimes those things are very real, and they can cause people to be stuck. And I think one of the entire um, motivations for this entire experience is simply, we want to get off the hamster's wheel. When you, when you are on the hamster's wheel, you're not going anywhere and you're going nowhere fast. But when you get on the potter's wheel, when you get on, on the, you know, God is the, is the potter. So when you get on the potter's wheel and he begins to shape you and mold you, then you can experience expansion. You can experience change because you have elevated yourself and you put yourself in a position to be worked on. You've put yourself in a position to be healed and to be molded by God. So the reason why I address these topics is because we want to graduate from that hamster's wheel. You want to be able to say, okay, well, if I am going around and round, then at least I know that I'm growing. And if I have to spin around this potter's wheel, I know that I'm being shaped and I know that I'm being molded and things are changing for me. And I think when people really begin to take the time out to focus on themselves in such a way, it is truly a core game changer, right? So then it brought us over to the month of April, which is the past and really just illuminating and highlighting things from our past that we may have forgotten about. Guys, you know, sometimes you can go through something and it is so deep and it is so tough and it is so hard on you. And then you say, you know what? That's it. I don't want to think about this anymore. And then you call yourself moving on to something else, not realizing that those things should still be addressed. So we definitely talk about things in the past that were necessary. And then we went to last month, month, which was May, and it was on mistrust. 
And we talked about how when you put your trust in man, it will fail you every time. And we bring the energy back to put your trust in God and let him lead you. And you lean not on your own understanding. And we built upon that. So for this month, with our topic being failure, we are going to talk about failure from multiple aspects, okay? So today, just giving a brief overview as we get into it, I want you guys to really think about some of the things that I tell you about with failure, okay? Again, there's no right or wrong answer. I am not a uh, a seasoned professional in terms of being a doctor talking about this stuff. I'm talking about my own life, my experience, and how God is leading me in my ministry. So that that is what I am using as factual information for me. But I always encourage you guys, read your word, read your Bible for yourself, lean on God for yourself, understand your path for yourself. These things are just put in place for you to inspire you to go to the Lord, to inspire you to want to inflict change on your life. This is what this is about. And I think it is it is paramount season in this time, guys. We are right in the middle of the year. This is the time where we should be focusing on how we can improve and really get down to the bottom of the rest of the things that we have to do for the rest of the year. And maybe some of you are listening and this is your first time hearing it and you didn't hear the other six months before. Well, I have good news for you. You can get all of the healing experience um, downloads for free. You can hit the link below this episode and you can just get caught up. Everything is highlighted underneath and you can get caught up with all of the episodes that you may have missed and you can get, you can start all the way from process. Now, if you want to go further, if you want to go further, there is also a workbook and you can also hit the link below this episode or go to imwiretoinspire.com and you can get a copy of the digital workbook. You can print the workbook out. You can upload it to the PDF filler and you can also, um, you know, you can type in the PDF filler if you so choose. But with that, it is it gives you another step. It is a, a book that is full of information on each topic. It has probing questions. It has scriptures. And it really gives you a chance to really write out and think about what it is you're experiencing. And I would also encourage you, if you don't want to get the workbook, have a journal. Or make sure you go to the site and download the podcast and replay them until you really begin to see some change. I was getting very discouraged with this um, series because, excuse me, with this experience because I just was kind of feeling like I'm like, God, I don't, I'm not looking for anybody to praise me or anything. I just want to make sure that I'm helping somebody. I don't want to just be wasting my time or anybody else's time. Or, you know, Lord, I don't want to be doing something outside of your will. Maybe I thought this was something I should be doing. But lo and behold, when I started feeling like that, y'all, somebody sent me something out of the blue and it just, I instantly just cried because it lets me know that, y'all, if any of you listening, if you are, you know, you don't, people don't have to know your name, but if you're on social media or if you're in a place where, you know, you're at work every day and you're seeing people, you never know how much a kind word can affect, uh, can uh, affect somebody. You never know how your obedience to what God is telling you to do. If he says, okay, you know what? Pay for their lunch today. Or you know what? Just go and ask them how they're doing today. Or hey, send them a text today. Or hey, make that post today and tag them. Or hey, turn your stuff off today and just pray for whoever um, I drop in your spirit. And then the next day you find out they needed those prayers. You know, I think it is just really important for you to understand that you have so much power in your life to actually help other people heal just by basic and simple obedience. Okay. You really have an opportunity to do that. And I don't want you guys to miss that. I almost, you know, took the bait. I almost got caught up in feeling like, okay, well, what I'm doing is not really helping anybody. You know, maybe, you know, I don't even know if I should continue the podcast. I don't even know if I should do the lives anymore. I don't know what I should do at this point because sometimes it just gets to a place where God is still moving and ironing things out and smoothing things out. And I've always come from the space of if it affects one person, I'm legit happy because I know that it's God that's telling me to do these things. And I know when I don't, somebody is going to miss Uh, some type of help or healing that God put in me to do for them. So I do not want to miss those opportunities. So jumping in with that, guys, each time we do a topic, it is based and inspired by a scripture. This one is from Proverbs 24, 16. I know most of you, if not all, have probably heard this before because some people don't even know that this is Bible. Because they hear it so randomly in songs and people say it all the time. But this is a scripture that says that the righteous falls seven times and rises again. 
but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. So basically, it's saying that, and the number seven is significant because it's a number of completion, but it's also saying that they rise up on the eighth time. And that means a new beginning. So one of the things I want to just, I just kind of want to break down failure for you. And I just want to talk about your perception of it and how you may feel about it. Now, let's, let's just, we, we going to chop it up now. So check this out for me, how I viewed failure has evolved. Okay. Of course, as a child coming up, failure could be dev- devastating. Failure could be something that causes you to question your very being. It can cause you to, um, Put your confidence on the line. It can cause fear. It can cause rejection. Um, Failure really can set you off in a direction that could truly stifle your destiny. Because there's some of you I know that are listening right now. And I feel this is even prophetic. You know, this is the Holy Spirit moving in me as I say this. Some of you have things that you should have accomplished. But that one small failure from decades ago, some of you. Years ago, weeks ago, months ago, it has caused you to miss things that God was trying to bring after that. And you know, a lot of times, guys, I remember when I was younger, I used to say things like, okay, you know what? I'm a failure. Oh my God, I'm a failure. I can't believe I did this. I'm just, oh God, it was ridiculous. And I don't want to act like I'm this perfectly evolved person. That's why I want to break it down to you and show you how you too can evolve if you are not already there. Back in the day, failure was like the kiss of death to me. I felt like if I failed at something that was horrible, I would never recover from that. And it just wasn't a good look at all. I did not feel good about myself. I really took failure personally. Okay. As I begin to grow and mature, I got myself in a Bible based church. I I got rooted and grounded in a place. I was in Atlanta and I started going to Dale Brown's church word of faith, right? And I never had that kind of church experience before in my life. And one of the key things he said within the first few weeks of me being a member of that church, he said, and I don't know if this is his quote, but I'm going to quote what I heard him say to me was to the congregation. Rather failure is not a person. It's an event that did something monumental to me and my psyche concerning failure. Okay. I totally love and enjoy reading incredible books by great humans and just reading stories of people who have been successful, who have really blazed the trail on their own. They've run a gamut from um, everybody from uh, Les Brown to Miles Monroe, um, even Oprah, just so many different people that, um, you know, I, I would pay attention to and I would listen to their stories, just hundreds of people over the course of time and many years of just wanting to be a person who, you know, exhibited greatness in some way, shape or form. And I started to realize y'all that I had all of these things going on, but I would either start projects and stop them, or I would never see things through to completion. Things would not come through to fruition. And that was a red flag for me. Okay. Now, many of you know what it is like to feel like you're supposed to be doing something and you feel like you're so gifted. You can see everyone else around you prospering. And you had an idea five years ago, you told them about, and they didn't did it 30 times since. And they didn't even start when you were talking about it. And I found that that kind of thing had become prevalent in my life. And when I really started to understand the concept of what failure actually was, instead of me running from it and avoiding it, I began to embrace it. Very, very difficult to do. That is a very easy statement to make, but it is extremely hard to actually execute. So with that being said, that began the journey in my life to really beginning to look at failure as a gift. I had to look at failing things as opportunities for growth, opportunities for learning, an opportunity to fail on a certain level so that when I got to the highest level, that type of thing would not befall me. It would not be a crutch or something to stop me or delay me getting to my highest goals and dreams. Okay. So with that being said, I started to really look at failure from a perspective of, how can my failure help failures help other people? Well, the first thing I knew I had to do was stop calling myself a failure because number one, 
that is inaccurate information. That's dishonest information because I would be lying if I called myself a failure. And I think once I started to embrace it from that space right there of failure, not being a human being, but it's an actual event. It's a, it's a, it's an action. It's a verb, so to speak, failing failure. It's not a person, you know, it's, it's something that I had to really understand and really begin to work on embracing for those of you who are listening today and you are dealing with a situation right now where you may have lost everything. You lost your relationship, maybe your friendships, your finances, your money, your job. Uh, even you may feel like your health is failing. You feel like a ton of things. You are in a season right now where you feel like you just can't get it together. No matter how hard you try, you feel like you are an epic, consistent failure. For those of you who are listening to this right now, I want you to just to think about this. What if you took the va- which, what if you took the vantage point of looking at what you're in right now as failure versus, I mean, excuse me, failure being just something that you're in right now versus who you are. Failure is not who you are. Okay? It is just something that you have to go through. But it is not going to be the end all and be all of who you ultimately become. It is a part of the fabric of who you ultimately become. But some of you are in such a horrible position mentally and you cannot get out of the situation of feeling stuck because you keep feeling like a failure. So when you, when, you know, let me give you an example. I don't know who this, who needs this, but I feel like I have to give this type of example. So let's say it's your job. You walked away from your job or you quit your job or you got fired or whatever the case may be because you felt for some reason you either had to leave and it was God telling you, you just felt like it was an unction in your spirit. Some of you, it didn't work out whatever whatever and they cut you off whatever the case may be today you don't have the employment that you once had okay check this out think about how if you don't look at failure as is something as um as something that's just an event every time a bill comes and you don't have the money you're gonna start thinking about how you're a failure again Because now you don't have the money because you don't have the job. And you might be looking for a job, but nobody called you back yet. But you find yourself every time a bill comes in the mail, every time somebody calls you, you end up depressed and you are back at feeling like I am a failure. So right there, you have to change the narrative. Okay, you have to change the narrative of feeling and believing that you are a failure. And the way you do that is by saying, okay, hold up. If there are times in my life and seasons in my life where I'm absolutely winning and I'm at the top of my game, that means that I cannot consistently be a failure. Because how could you be in a season in your life and you're absolutely winning and you are top, you are top par, you're doing everything at your highest. At that moment, you're not failing at anything. So technically, there... That's not even a true statement for you to just say that you are in a perpetual state of being a failure. So that's the first thing. You're going to have to change your narrative. So let's say you are that person. The next time the bill comes in the mail and you don't have it because you're waiting for the new job to call you, your first thought shouldn't be, I'm a failure. Oh my God, here we go again. I don't have it. The bills keep coming. Now I'm depressed. I'm no good. I'm no this. Okay, listen, what you have to do is decide. Because you are giving too much energy to doing the opposite of what you want your outcome to be. So that is where you are going to have to nip that in the bud. Because it is not going to give you what it is you desire. It's not going to happen. So right here is the place where you say, okay, although I do not have this money. And although for whatever reason I am connected to why I no longer have that source of income. I am not a failure. This is something that I attempted in a season and I thought it was going to go one way, but it abruptly ended because it either took too much out of me or I wasn't giving enough to it or God just simply didn't want me in it anymore. But this is just something that I thought that I could attempt and it was going to be one way and it didn't. Okay. So it may have been something that I, I failed at in a season, but that's just an event. Failure happened. That was an event that happened in this time in your life. So now when The option comes up for you concerning, okay, hey, the bill is is in the mail and it's late or whatever the case may be. Instead of you saying, see, this is my fault. I'm a failure. I can't even pay my bills. You should stop and say, okay, so first of all, I know that failure was an event that has happened in this season in my life. 
And as a result of that happening, there's some other things coming down the pipeline, like some bills or some things I need to take care of. And I feel like I can't take care of them because of that event. But I also know no season lasts forever. And because this is an event, events, events have a begin time and an end time. No event lasts forever. So you have to commit to the fact that you know that this event is almost over. It's almost closing time, buddy. And you do not have the bandwidth to keep stressing out about something that is going to end anyway. But if you sit and stew in the fact that you think that you are a failure, you will continue to perpetuate the longevity of it. It will continue to go on and on and on. And how you feel about yourself is going to worsen and worsen and worsen. And moreover, you are not going to get to the place of actually winning. You will not get to the opposite event, which is winning. So... What I need you to think about in this hour when we're talking about this, because this is just day one, we're just getting started. You really have to ask yourself, what is your narrative about failure? Do you really see yourself as a failure? And listen, if that is an honest answer for you and you're like, Robin, I hear you, but I literally, I think about my family. I think about my kids or I think about my goals. I didn't reach. You may not have a family and kids yet, whatever the case may be. You just may be stewing in the fact that you are not reaching a goal that you have set for yourself. And it just feels asinine to you that you have not done it. So you cannot separate yourself from failure. Well, this is what I want you to think about. Obviously, you want something better to happen, right? Realize this. The more you put out negative energy toward that thing that you're stuck on, it is going to delay the thing that you want to come. So if you want the new job to come, every time you start thinking of yourself as a failure, every time you think about yourself feeling like, okay, it'll never happen. I can't believe this. You are prolonging what's for you to come to you. You want to know why? Because good and bad energy is like oil and water. It's not going to mix. It's not, it does not mix. So it, you, you, you're not even giving yourself space to receive the thing that you are supposed to have. So here is the thing. Think about what your energy is like when things are going good. Keep that same energy right there. You stay in that space. Because here is the thing. You sitting there stewing in it. You sitting there in a, in a place of feeling like it's never going to end. It is not going to give you the result you want. So in order for you to look at failure for what it is. You have to ask yourself, the way I'm feeling about failure, is it going to give me the result that I want? Is it going to give me what I desire? Or is it going to keep me here longer with the thing I can't stand that I didn't want to happen? Is that going to be the story for me? Because y'all, you have the control. Nobody else can control you. You pull the strings of you in your life. So if you are still stewing in it and feeling like you're less than, You are going to continue to feel that way until you say, you know what? I am changing this narrative and I am not going to look at myself as a failure anymore. It is impossible for me to be a failure. I am a human being. Okay. Failure adds value to my life because every time I fail, an event happens in my life and it is considered a failure because I am not a failure. It is an event. It's not a person. Every time one of those events happens in my life. I can say, okay, hey, I remember this happened the last time. So this time it won't happen again because thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus, I fell on my face. Thank you, Jesus, that relationship blew up in my face. Thank you, Jesus, I got fired from that job. Thank you, Jesus, I walked off that job. Thank you, Jesus, I got into it with my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Because then you begin to understand, hey, all of those things that made me feel some type of way, All of those events have culminated me to a place of maturity and a closeness and a deeper faith in Christ where I can say, you know what? It does not matter what comes at me. I know as long as you got me, I can't fail at anything. No, I may not have been successful at it at that try. And yeah, sure. This, 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 nobody came to the event. The event was a failure. Oh, well, okay. It may not feel good because you may have put hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. And now you're feeling like I did all of that and I can't get stuff done. You're going to have to still make the choice and the decision to make the change. No one else is going to make the change for you. Okay. 
This is something I cannot stress to you enough. You have to take control. Nobody else is going to do it for you. I can promise you that. Okay. I'm not going to sell you no wooden nickels, partner. Listen, I'm not going to do it. Because if I do that, then I would be phony. I would be telling you, okay, well, it's okay. You know, just keep praying your way out of it. Listen, no, you will keep praying your way out of it. But y'all, we got to take action. We can keep praying and praying and praying. But at some point, God is going to start moving on those prayers. And then he's going to require you to do something. And he's going to require you to change your view. He's going to require you to start to see yourself the way you do. And I was thinking, I said, well, you know what? You can't really force things on people because people have different opinions. Some people might just argue me down and say, hey, no, it is a person. That's totally fine. Some people may say, well, hey, if there's a winner... Then there could be a failure. Well, I mean, you know, hey, winner, loser, failure. You can you can play with it however you want to. That's not the narrative I choose. Because I personally believe that that keeps me down. That keeps me married to less than. That keeps me married to a place that's not going to add the value that I need to get the outcome that I desire. Okay? Now, I wanted to mention to you guys something. Every day of this week, when we speak on failure, there's always a topic. Now, we know we're still on the same scripture, which is Proverbs 24, 16, about falling seven times and coming up eight. Now, the end of that scripture talks about what happens to a person who's shady, when a person is about that calamity life and what happens to them when, they, when, they, when they're in that position, they stumble. I'm going to touch on that at the end of the week and really show you how God was able to put those two things in one sentence to show you the difference between somebody who wants to say that they're a failure versus somebody who actually is living the life of understanding, hey, that's an event, that's something that happened, I'm not keeping it. And I'll break that down to you near the end of the week. So make sure you listen every day so you don't miss it. Now, today, the question that I want to pose to you today is, what is your barometer for success? I'm not talking about what your mom and dad and them say. I'm not talking about what your friends say. You dig? I'm talking about what is your barometer for success? Um, listen, that is not an easy question to answer. So this is why I will tell you again, get the workbook if you don't have it. Again, it's digital. The link is below this um, episode. If you don't want to get that, that's no problem. Just download the episodes and get you a notebook. You can go to Dollar Tree, get you one for a whole dollar and it ain't pen to go with it. Write this stuff down. Put open up your memo pad on your um on your your telephone on your telephone. Well, cell phone rather. It's still a telephone, but on your cell phone, write that information down. Listen, you got to get ahead of this. Okay, you have to stop wallowing in this whole failure. This failure that you are gonna have to get ahead of yourself. Let me tell you something. I went through some something very um what's the word very peculiar involving someone else in 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 the last year or so right and as i've watched this thing play out i could have felt like a huge failure or a dummy even right but one of the things that god had to show me he was like robin you stick with me okay that may have happened and it may have caused you to question some things about yourself and if you know, why, why there were certain things you didn't see about this particular situation in this person, but you have the choice to decide, um, you know, as it met its demise, the situation met its demise. If you were going to look at yourself as a failure, or if that was just an event that failed in that season in your life. And I chose the latter. I'm like, okay, that means that I'm going to write these things down and I'm tell you, I had to go through a process. So let's get down to this process because this is what I want you guys to work on. We're nearing the end of today's episode. So I want to get this out to you guys so you can start working on it overnight. So a couple things. Number one, with the question of what is your barometer for success? If there is something, some, some, some goal that you've set for yourself and you feel like you just consistently, you're not getting it and you're a failure at it. You need to ask yourself, what's the core of that desire? Because let me tell you something about God. When the Lord gives you something, he adds no sorrow to it. Okay? He adds no sorrow. So what I mean by that is this. I'm not saying you're not going to have any hard work. I'm not saying that things are going to always be perfect. Okay? That's not what I'm saying to you at all. But when God gives you something, and when you keep saying that God gave you this thing, and and I'm not talking about, 
you know, um, again, like you may have to work and go through some things. I'm not talking about that. But if you are going through something, okay, and it's been an extremely long time and you are constantly sorrowful, you have to ask yourself, is this the barometer you set? Or is this what God said? Because listen, some of you guys are feeling like failures and you are saying God told you to do something or be with somebody or whatever, whatever. And now you're feeling like a failure. But guess what? Let me show you how you got to start lining up this stuff with the word of God. And when it does not line up and when it does not add up, you are going to have to say, you know what? You got to give yourself a full examination and say, you know what? This may have been something I wanted in my flesh. And you know what? This is going to sting for some people because this is for the church go- goers, the-, the tithers, the people that's making buku money. Now you successful. You got it going on. Nobody can tell you nothing about your walk with Christ. No, this is talking about you too. Cause you may be walking into something and thinking, feeling like a failure at something and the world may not know about it, but you know, because it's something pride could have made you say, Hey, this is, this is, God told me to do this. And you'll, you, you know, you will not let your pride die, die down to the point where you say, you know what? I really, really wanted this in my flesh. And I told it to enough prayer warriors and intercessors and I, and I convinced some people and pled my case and I bucked myself up and boom, this is what it was. But let me tell you why something is suspect about that. Why do you think God would set a barometer for, for, barometer for you? And you always feel sorrow concerning that, that, that goal. Like I said, I'm not saying no hard work and ups and downs. I'm not talking about that, but you consistently feel sorrowful. You consistently feel crazy about this. Who told you to do this thing that you are holding yourself to this high standard for? And now you feel like a, a failure. Where is this coming from? Listen, Proverbs 10, says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without pain or toil for it, which means the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and adds no sorrow. If you are feeling sorrowful about this barometer you set, I can tell you right now by the word of God, God didn't give you that. So I want you to write down what some of these things are in your life and you feel like you're consistently feeling sorrow attached to it. If you are feeling sorrow, right? We know whatever that goal was you set, God ain't in that barometer, baby. You're going to have to switch that. You heard me? It's not him because it's not lining up with the word of God. Yeah, you got to Proverbs talk about it all the time. How if you don't work, you don't eat. You got to use your hands. Listen, you got to get down and handle your business. But some of you are just you are in a perpetual state of sorrow for some of these things. And some of you feel like, well, I spent 10 years on my education. But God may be calling you to something to do something to do something completely different. You know, but you're still holding on to it. Some of you, God has told you to do something, but you don't want to do it. And you're sticking to what you like. And, and, and it's, the, it's the opposite. You're not doing what he's telling you to do in terms of getting that education or stepping out. And now you're feeling like a failure. Let me tell you something. We have to be careful that we are not calling God names and misusing him and saying he's doing things that he is not. Because we have set these barometers that set us up to feel like failures. That is where we have to examine this thing because we are the common denominator, y'all. Okay? I am talking to you from my own life experience. I don't need to be. I'm not on no high horse. I have no right to be on no high horse. I'm on the same horse with everybody else. Because at the end of the day, somebody got to be transparent about this stuff. Somebody got to cause you to sit and think, what is it that I've set for myself? Some of you right now, you are in a transition in your life and you don't have the money coming in. Some of you got all the money in the world coming in, relationships popping off. But when you go home and you're by yourself, you're miserable. Because guess what? On the flip side, some of y'all got all the bells and whistles, all the cameras popping, the money flowing, the connections bomb. But in your spirit, you know that's not what God wants you to do. You got that itty bitty tiny nudge and you know the Lord telling you, I don't care how good he look. I don't care how good she look. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how many people said you were great. You go home at night and you know in your gut something not right. But you don't want to let go. You know in God's eyes. You may not be doing what he's telling you to do. You may be failing at being obedient to God in this season, but you would much rather look like king of the world and queen of the world and put on a facade because it's easier like that. And everybody else co-signs it. Everybody else tells you what it is. It's so great. So many confirmations. Y'all, at some point, we have to start really getting serious about hearing God and really taking responsibility for the things that we say are quote unquote failures in our lives and what role we played in that. That is the raw, pure, 
unadulterated truth. Okay. So you have to figure out what is your role in all of the things I just mentioned. You have to write that down. Okay. And one other thing I want you to think about when you think about what your barometer for success is. Once you figure it out, I want you to be straight up, just dead honest with yourself. Did you actually come up with it? Or did, you, did it start off with somebody telling you something maybe when you were younger and it snowballed and then you started to believe it because enough people co-signed it? Let me tell y'all. And this, I'm at the end, so I, I just want to tell y'all this one little story because I want you to ponder it. I was talking to a mentor this past weekend, and she was talking about um, somebody that we knew they had a call to ministry, right? Right when we saw them about to step into that place where they were going to be able to, we thought they were really going to be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to really do what God is telling me to do. I'm going to start changing my image. You know, we, you know, we was looking at it like, okay, is it starting slowly with the social media? They're taking up more spiritual gigs and they're doing all these things. Right. And it just, it was like out of nowhere, right? Somebody stepped on the scene in their lives and completely took them the other way. Right. And they took them in the way of the thing that they were used to. Things looking flashy and shiny. And this is what, and, and so what, what, what happened was the enemy started sprinkling some Jesus-y stuff and some godly stuff in it. And it's, oh, it's co-signed and this prophet spoke on it. And, you know, it was, the, the enemy was doing a nice little cocktail of, of perfection like he does with counterfeit situations. And it was sad because what my mentor was saying was that person could easily be struggling with feeling that, that sense of failure, but because everything else just seems so right and so perfect, they're not going to acknowledge that. And, and one thing I want you guys to think about, what, how would you want it? Would you want to be known to God as someone who has consistently failed to be obedient to him? Or would you want to be somebody who looked like you're perfect in front of the world so that the world doesn't think you're a failure? You got to choose. And sometimes that's not an easy choice because all of the bells and whistles are going to stop. But the thing that I feel for when it, for people when it comes to these situations, because that's what happened to me. I ran from ministry for years. I'm, trust me, I, I, and I could spot that kind of stuff easily because I went through it. Everybody's situation is the same. Just because I said that don't make it so, I'm not saying that. But for what I do know, I'm able to recognize it, you know, at least on some level. So with all of that being said, I want you to ask yourself, where are you in your life right now concerning that? Okay, really think about it. And when we come back tomorrow for um, episode two of the healing experience, speaking on failure, the question is what I've been saying, but we're going to break it down. The difference between failure being a person or an event. I'm going to really, really shell that out. And we're going to break it down in such a way so that you can really figure out where you fit into the mold. How does this add up for you? Okay. So that was today. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me. It is the first day of the healing experience on the topic of failure. Make sure you go back and get caught up. Guys, if you want to... Maybe you say, you know what, Robin, I don't, I actually do not want the full workbook. I don't think I need it. Cause guys, if you look underneath this episode, just look at the, the, um, the, the description, I have all 12 topics. Okay. All of the topics that are available are from the last six months and they're not available until the actual month. They're not available ahead of time, but I did give you the full list for the year just so you can be aware. Some of you may look at the list and say, you know what? I think in November, I need that topic. I'll go back and check out March. That was cool, but that might be it. It's all good. I have workbooks for the particular month too. So if you just want that particular topic, hit me up. I normally have them live and active on the site, but if you have any trouble or any questions, you can shoot me an um, email at podcast at unwired to inspire.com. And I will give you all of that information. And also if you do happen to get any of the workbooks, you also get some free stuff. You get access to the private Facebook group and you also get a, a personal recording that walks you through how to maximize the usage of the booklet and you get another little treat as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed today. Make sure you join us again tomorrow and we will be back on part two. I want you guys to also study and look at Proverbs 24, 16. That will be what we're guided by this week. 
And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist dot life or I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.